Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we're taking a look at another fun mod, this time in the form of the Freight Transportation and Technologies mod, Phase 1, by forum user Rover Dude of Umbra Space Industries fame. This man has made a lot of fun and wonderful mods, and this is just another notch on the belt. And so let's just jump right on into the VAB and take a look at it, though. Before we start looking at parts, I probably should mention that a requirement for this mod is carbonite. So if you don't have carbonite, you'll have to grab it to try out all of the wonderful parts that Freight Transportation Technologies adds into the game. And, well, you're going to want to download carbonite because these parts are just glorious. They're all geared towards heavy mining and hauling of lots and lots of crap through space. It's absolutely glorious. And to start, we have a command pod, the Honey Badger. And this thing is massive. It is a 3.75 meter module, uh, which is just huge. I mean, compared to the Mark 1-2 command pod, that's the size. That is amusing to say the least. Now, at the moment, uh, there is a planned internal view for this, but right now it uses the Mark 1-2 Command Pod IVA for the Honey Badger as well. But in time, there is supposed to be a uh, internal view added, which I look forward to because, again, this thing's huge. I, I, I want to see how spacious it will be inside. And well, that's all we've got for command parts here. So over on into propulsion, we head on over to the next tab. We have two engines added by this mod. Both are vertical takeoff and landing engines. The first one is the Honey Badger VTOL, which is a liquid fuel and oxidizer engine. And if we just pop that on, you'll notice the engine ports facing downwards from the craft. And of course, well, as it kind of stated, liquid fuel and oxidizer to power it. The other VTOL engine is an atmospheric engine that is electrically driven. This baby, oh man, look at that, is just basically a giant fan which uses electrical power to create thrust. And it is extraordinarily powerful. I was playing around with this before starting the recording and my god, it's... It's got a lot of power behind this thing. It's it's pretty cool. Okay, and that's it for the engines. Now, next on to control, we get this lovely Honey Badger control module, which basically adds a, a little series of uh, small RCS ports to the exterior of the craft in this uh, wonderful angled pattern that we have here. So you don't have to worry about aligning these up yourself. You just plop this on in between two other modules and you are good to go. And it does also include a reaction wheel, which is handy because, well, a lot of these parts are pretty heavy. So you, you're gonna need reaction wheels to make sure things can actually rotate around and move. And uh, so next on to structural, we have some fun parts in here. Now, if we bring this up a bit more and zoom out a bit, the first one is probably one of my favorite pieces. I love building ships that kind of go off from the center column and not as in like asparagus staging, but I actually like having ships in space where you've got a central sort of primary core and then fuel and engines over here and same on the other side. And this makes it easy because we have the Honey Badger Outrigger, which you just clamp on there, and then bam, you've got parts to uh, build off from either direction. And that, that is just glorious. It makes my life a heck of a lot easier from trying to do that manually with all sorts of other structural parts. And then we also have this lovely little engine cowling, which is quite cool. If we flip that baby around, you'll notice, oh, there we go, if we can get it on, it has spots for four engines right here that you can just grab from uh, over here, flip this engine around, and bam, we put it right onto one of those slots. It's very nice to have those hard points. And so you can just attach four of your favorite engine of this size and plop them right on down. It is quite handy and just gorgeous looking. I love that, it's just beautiful. Then you also have a uh, FTT 3-2 adapter which will go from the uh, 3.75 meter size down to the 2 meter size 
you can then build off from this. And then we also have the FTT end cap, which if we build off from that one, we have right there. Just a nice little end cap so you don't have sort of this texturing going on at the back of your ship. You can just pop on an end cap and be good with it. Now, we don't have anything added into aerodynamics, but into utility, if we go to the next page, we've got some more fun stuff. This section has three new additions with this mod. The first, and by far my favorite, is the Honey Badger 5 meter cargo bay. So it's a 3.75 by 5 meter cargo bay, and this is just, oh, look at that. That is just glorious. A nice large cargo bay that you can just close up. You can hold satellites in here. If you build this into some sort of planetary lander, you could put in a rover into this thing. It's just cool. I really, really do like that thing. And then the next piece that we get is the Honey Badger cargo pod. And this one, this one's quite unique. As by default, it comes in with holding ore because since, remember, this uses carbonite, so it's using that open resource system. And it starts off by default with ore, but uh, using these next and previous texture buttons, which is strange, it's next texture, you can change what this cargo pod is holding. So we can go from ore over to water, to substrate, to minerals, to carbonite, of course, and uh, liquid fuel and oxidizer. And I believe that is it. Indeed it is. So you can use these as extended fuel tanks, and they actually hold a fair amount of liquid fuel and oxidizer in something this size. And I just love the look of the model. It's just really cool. I love those indentations on the side. And then the last bit that it adds into utility is the Honey Badger service module. And this thing is quite cool. First off, it is, of course, another nice little uh, octagonal part there. And it has uh, parts going off of the top and bottom that you can see there, where you can then attach stuff to, if we like grab one of these drills, we can attach that to the side. Like that, perfectly. So you don't have to fudge around with any other sort of adapter parts, you just use that. But besides being an adapter for top and bottom or side to side or whichever way you want it, it's also a nuclear reactor that uses enriched uranium and liquid helium. It's quite cool. And when you activate the reactor, you get a, uh, I think it's, ooh, got spent uranium down here that fills up. And this thing produces a lot of power over a very, very long amount of time. I was testing this earlier today and that thing just kept on going. I It took forever for me to notice a drop from these 250 marks here. And it's, it's just kind of a cool reactor. I quite enjoy it. It is quite cool. As with, well, oh yes, it is depleted uranium. There we go, says it right there. Now at the moment, this is still a sort of pre-release of the mod and a work in progress. So as you can see here, all of these descriptions are just to be determined. Uh, but already there are costs involved if you are doing a career mode in the game so you can take ship cost into consideration. But uh, yeah, basically, well besides this drill, this is all the fun parts that this mod adds. And even though it's not a huge number of parts, they're very, very fun and are just cool. And you can make some really cool ships with this, along with the required carbonite pieces that the mod has as well. You could use these to build some really cool, like, Mooner drilling bases to mine out carbonite. It's, it's quite wonderful. And we actually exit out here. I've built two ships. Uh, one that is in orbit. We're going to go check out that one first because I actually know that it works and is just fun and cool. So if we jump into the Honey Badger 1. Oh, there we go. Like I said, I like building ships where have they where you have parts going off to each side. So that makes it quite easy with the outrigger there. And of course, these are cargo bays. So I've angled them so that the uh, cargo bay doors open out like that. And... If I actually thought ahead of myself, I could have put satellites in here. But of course, I didn't. It's just empty. But nonetheless, you know, <laughs> they're there and, you know, cargo-y. I always do like a good cargo bay. And of course, I've got the VTOL engines on this thing so that you could try and land on the surface. Though I would 
probably get myself killed. We have the RCS as well, so we can use those sort of inline our built-in RCS bits that the mod comes with. And as you saw on the back, oh my, I am I am going all over the place now. We are using that cool new Oh god, what was it called again? Oh, let's see if we can click it. Can we click it? No, we can't click it in space. I think it was Cowling? Yes, a cowling. And I've got those wonderful engines in there that we could use to uh, sort of propel ourselves. It is engines, after all. And like I said, I do have the VTOL engine, so if we activate one of these, I am actually curious. I haven't tried these VTOL engines in the slightest so far. So if we activate those and just burn our liquid fuel and oh there we go we're going out of control i accidentally turned on my rcs well this ship screwed <laughs> oh boy and as you can see like i told you earlier this does use the mark 1-2 command pod interior for the time being eventually it will have its own independent interior which will be quite nice to see but uh for now Built a quite nice little ship. I enjoy it thoroughly, and there we go. Turn on that engine or that reactor, rather, and we have all the power we need to uh, power this little ship on its way. It's glorious. I like it. So back to the space center, and the second ship I built, I tried to fly, but it um, it didn't work. So if we go to uh, my electric VTOL here, I use the uh, electric prop f fan VTOL engines that the mod adds in to build this little monstrosity with a cargo bay in the middle that if I open up, rips the craft into pieces. <laughs> and uh, I had to add a second honey badger command pod to the back simply to uh, balance this thing out because... Well, that honey badger, with how massive it is, it is very, very heavy. And if we just barely throttle this thing up, start up these VTOL engines, get them spinning, you'll uh, notice, like I, how I mentioned earlier, that these things are very powerful. Granted, we have four, so that is, you know, just adding on to the power of things, but they've got a great sound to them. Of course, uh, the fire spitter plug-in is being used for that. Which does come included with the mod, and oh my god, that is loud. I'm going to have to remember to turn down the uh, sound in editing. But there we go. Fans are nice and spun up, so let's just gently throttle to about one-third thrust. And there we go. We are taking off, and fairly rapidly. Oh my. So with this ship, just four engines on about one-fourth thrust, maybe even a fifth, takes this thing off quite nicely and uh yeah i can't steer at all there is uh <laughs> not enough reaction wheel power to actually tilt this thing in any direction but uh we can always throttle up all the way and see how fast we could get this baby up into uh the atmosphere and already oh my god we're almost to 200 meters per second Ah, uh, look at it go. Zoom out to uh, get the sound not quite so loud. Sorry, Desley, Kerman, and Bobrin, and uh, Hun Hun Hen Henford? Henford? Yes, Henford. There we are. Oh, we are angling to the side, and the engines are about to overheat and explode. But we've gotten to almost 500 meters per second. Oh, and they exploded. Ah, uh, we didn't quite hit the 500 mark, but yeah. That's how powerful those engines are, so <laughs> you can do a lot with a little, and it's just glorious. Well, now we can open this without it falling apart, though now it is plummeting back to the planet without any engine power whatsoever. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this episode. I'm going to revert that flight so all those guys don't uh, get themselves killed. Uh, yeah, once again, this has been the Freight Transportation Technologies Phase 1 by Rover Dude and Umbra Space Technologies. And it's just beautiful. Very well made and very well modeled parts. I love the textures on them. A lot of great uses to them. It's just, 
it's wonderful and I love the size factor as well. The 3.75 meter size is just cool to have because so far all we really had in that size has been fuel tanks and giant engines. Now we've got command pods, nuclear reactors, cargo bays, and all sorts of other stuff. And that's just fun and cool. So yes, if you'd like to check this out for yourself, you can just follow the link in the description and uh, download it. I would definitely say to give it a go. It is just fun and entertaining. And of course, I hope you have enjoyed this episode today and that you come back for the next. And of course, until such time, thank you for watching, my friends. And as always, have a good one. <laughs>